This is a webinar we've been running for um, a number of years now. It's become a bit of a tradition. Um, and it's really just an opportunity to assess the festive season, primarily for our retail clients, um, but also for a you know, much wider range um, out there as well, just to give them a flavor of, of what the festive season looked like in terms of, um, in terms of visitation to, to the retail category. Um, but also to really paint that picture of the, uh, the products and themes that that emerged from uh, from the season as well. So, moving on to the agenda, we're going to do introductions very quickly, um, so we don't take up too much of your valuable time, um, and then touch on just a few of the changes that have taken place at Hitwise over the last couple of months. So, if you weren't aware, we've been bought by. Um, company called Connexity, which is very exciting. So we're going to be giving you a bit of background um, to that acquisition, um, and a bit of what it means for the business, but I'm, I'm sure there'll be other opportunities to go into, um, into that in depth in the future. Um, then on to traffic trends. So really looking at you know, the, the key dates that we saw pop out um, over the Christmas period, um, the sort of growth rates that we're seeing as well for some of those key days. Uh, we'll then dive into mobile visitation, um, but also search, which is uh, a bit of a new product for us. So the ability to understand how, how users are searching on their mobile and tablet devices compared with both PCs, desktops, laptops as well. Um, we're then going to be painting a bit of a picture of the, you know, the sort of top products that we saw people searching for online um, over the festive period as well. So giving you a view of that in the UK, both in terms of volume, um, but also the, the products where we saw the biggest growth. Um, and then John has helpfully uh, pulled out some of the data from um, the US as well. So obviously we're two quite connected nations and, and being able to understand what, what activity looks like um, in the States is, is a really useful measure as well. So we'll be doing a little bit of that. Um, and then finally, moving on to um, a focus around some, some key audiences, some relevant audiences that you know, we want to help our retail clients understand as well. Just give you a flavor of what we can do with our new um, audience view platform and our segmentation capabilities as well. So before I proceed, I just wanted to highlight the uh, very nifty hashtag that our marketing team have, um, have put together. So you can join the conversation at hashtag festive insights. Um, and my colleague Keisha will be um, tweeting as we go, so um, she'll be um, trying to uh, entice you all into a bit of a dialogue with us at the same time. So moving on, um, just to introduce myself, um, I'm the awful picture on the left-hand side of your screen. Um, I have since shaved, so I don't look quite as um, quite as awful as in that picture. But I look after uh, I look after project sales in the UK, so that's our, our really our custom data assets. Um, and our, our research engagement with clients. So anything that sits beyond the, the syndicated tool that most of our clients use day to day. So give me a call if um, there are any, any questions that you need answering. And then we've also got John Fatto. So John, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, Billy. Good morning. All right, it's actually morning for me. It's uh, afternoon for you. I, uh, I don't normally wear a jacket like that either. So um, thanks for joining us today. Perfect. So, just looking in a little bit of detail around the recent acquisition of Hitwise by Connexity. So a bit of history to Hitwise, originally a private company, bought by Experian in 2007. Um, and then in December last year, so very recently, um, we announced um, that we were being bought by Connexity, which I think is really exciting and gives us um, great opportunities to really link our data into sort of front-end deployment. So I think the, the difficulty with Hitwise is we've, we've always sat as a great insight platform, um, but we've never really done a great job of connecting with you know, the campaigns that our clients are running day to day. Um, I think the, the acquisition by Connexity, you can see with, with their wider offering, um, you know, <laughs> Building Hitwise into an overall proposition of you know, prog programmatic media buying, uh, but also those CPC retail listings as well, really links in the you know, immensely valuable data that we have with um, you know real life uh, 
digital campaigning. So I think everyone here is really excited by it. I think a number of you know the conversations I've had with clients um, certainly attest to their excitement over you know the opportunities that this can this can afford us. So I think the the future is bright for Hitwise, um, and and you know we're really excited to be working alongside our uh, new Connexity colleagues as well. So what we're not going to be doing is covering covering this in too much detail today. I think in future and with conversations you'll have with uh, your account management teams um, or you know your primary contact at Hitwise, they'll be able to give you more depth around you know what this what this means for for our relationships. But the near future is very much business as usual. But um, I think there's going to be some exciting developments um, coming in the future. So we'll we'll cover that at a later stage, not today, but. Um, I think it's a, it's a positive message. So moving on, um, looking into traffic trends now. So this is where we will start to look at number of visits that are being driven to the shopping and classified categories. The retail category is classified by Hitwise. So what we've seen is a pretty phenomenal number of visits um, over the festive period this year. You know, eight and a half billion. Um, as the headline stats, that is a nine percent increase from the same period in 2014. So, you know, big growth, um, and I think you know nearly a billion visits each week, um, and particularly around as we can see Black Friday um, and the week of Cyber Monday as well, really emerging as the those you know those peak time frames in which we're seeing consumer activity. At, you know, at a very high level. Just looking into key dates now as well. So what we've done, we've just we've we've broken this out on a daily basis just to give you a view of what those what those trends look like. We can see the top three days. There's been a bit of a seismic shift actually um, over the last two years. We can see the top day in terms of visitation for online retail in the UK um, was Black Friday. Now, last year we really saw that 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 day come to prominence. This year, that's just been cemented um, and grown even further. So we've seen 11% growth um, since 2014, um, and I think really, you know, Black Friday is obviously here to stay. Um, and I think you know, that continued growth um, we expect over the coming years as well. I think the the really interesting thing to note here also is that. You know, Boxing Day, which traditionally was always the um, was always the top shopping day within the UK, um, has actually fallen away quite quite drastically, um, and we're now seeing you know, Boxing Day doesn't even make it into the top 20 retail days over the course of the year. It was actually the 22nd biggest online shopping day. So, you know the the bulk of the activity occurring much earlier, um, you know, really, you know, we've, we've, and we've seen from the results that a lot of big retailers have recently issued into the market that, you know, the, the movement to online sales has, you know, really exploded this year. Um, and I think that, that early activity is definitely symptomatic of, you know, consumer activity, making sure everything, all the purchases are made early um, to ensure that, that delivery schedule. Um, Prior to the Christmas period as well, so I think you know very much um, you know activity happening earlier um, and big days coming through and just not really seeing the same level of uptake following um, following the Christmas break also. So just looking into into those key dates, so we can focus on on what that growth looks like. Now we thought we'd do this over the last three years to provide to provide some of that context. I think the, the standout trend here is really looking at Black Friday and Cyber Monday. We can just see the, the trajectory of the growth that has been achieved over those two days. You know, they're 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 here to stay. You know, coming from a position in 2013 where, in the mind of the consumer, they didn't really register. To 2014, when you know we realised there was a pretty seismic shift taking place in uh, consumer activity online. To 2015, where you know they've just outstripped you know, what were previously major trading days, um, you know, particularly Boxing Day, which has always been the biggest day of the year. 
that's just been eclipsed uh, by Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I think the, the one thing we wanted to you know, add here, uh, which was a, a stat that John pulled out. Um, sorry, guys, um, there's a slight issue with my slide deck. It keeps wanting to skip on, but um, bear with me and I'll go back to the correct slide. Um, I was just describing uh, one of the stats that John, John had found. So actually, as a proportion of total searches um, made, Black Friday had stronger interest um, from UK consumers than it did in the US. So by that measure, we're seeing Black Friday is more popular here than it is in the United States, which um, I think is really testament to the to the uptake that we've seen from from UK consumers and you know, their engagement with that that, that deal seeking activity as well. Yeah, just as a footnote to that, I'm just going to add that, that that on Black Friday itself, we saw a higher volume of search act, search activity focused on Black Friday, whereas in the United in the UK versus the United States, whereas the United States is really the entire week and even months before Black Friday searches are are ongoing and, and growing all the time. So, you know, at this point, this, with the rapid growth of Black Friday in the UK, you know, next year could be even bigger in sales and and research for sales will probably be getting started earlier and earlier into November. So something to keep on our radar for next year. Perfect. Thanks for that, John. Um, just going down now to some of the other dates that we should we should keep an eye on as well. And I think particularly when we've issued these sort of calendars before, it's been really useful in informing the campaigning that our clients engage in, particularly around that planning for next year and what those cycles might look like. So. We've just brought out some of those key dates, so Black Friday, obviously. I think the, the key one to notice is that email blasts begin on 29th of November. We actually we feel that that activity should be beginning a little earlier for our clients. Um, so pushing that into um, middle of November is probably going to be beneficial. But we really see that activity starting to pick up um, you know, in that sort of first week. Um, coming into December. Cyber Monday as well. Um, one of the interesting ones was on the 6th of December, we saw a gift guide week coming about. So people you know, looking for ideas um, around you know, what they should be buying for their partners or you know, gifts for him, gifts for her. That's when we see that activity starting to pick up. So if we're looking to inform um, content strategies, for instance, those are the sorts of considerations that we should be looking at. Um, Manic Monday coming in as well, not as big as we maybe expected. Cyber Monday and Black Friday really dominated this year. Um, click and Collect rising on the 12th, so you know coming into those final weeks, um, you know, that that as a proposition is you know something that's really resonated for a number of years. So, so making sure that you've got that information about, available is um, going to be really important. Peak email referrals coming in on 13th. So you know, still quite late in the day, but still a you know really good deal of uh, activity taking place there. One of the interesting ones was uh, Xmas Jumper Day. Um, so on the 18th, that Friday, we actually saw a huge uptake uh, for you know demand around Christmas jumpers. So you know, if uh, retailers are looking for you know, sort of tactical wins where they can I suppose engage with users, maybe attract ones they uh, wouldn't normally. Um, you know, elements like that can be can be really important in ensuring a successful Christmas. Uh, click and collect peaking on the 21st. Peak package tracking, so going into um, understand where your delivery is up to. And actually, <coughs> excuse me. Now actually peaked on the 22nd, so very late in the day, making sure everything's going to be delivered um, in those, those you know, last rush to the end. Um, and then gift vouchers as well. I mean, this is cutting it extremely fine. But what we've seen in consumer activity is really that very late in the day buying cycle. So people are you know, desperate to get gifts that might have forgotten for, for individuals. You know, buying vouchers or gift cards on the 24th. I think we can, we can all sympathize with that, but you know, we've seen a big pickup in activity there as well. So on the 25th, gadgets really coming to life. So people opening up what they've bought or maybe looking for ideas about how to spend the gift cards that have been bought the previous day. Um, and then moving into Boxing Day as well, which obviously this year just didn't didn't quite happen in the same way as it has done in previous years. So 
So, just giving you um, a top flavour um, of the, the share that specific retailers have. Um, so, this is really just giving you that breakdown of the overall view uh, of the UK marketplace, and we can see you know, major players: um, you know, Amazon, Argos, John Lewis, Marks and Spencers, etc. You know, really, really dominating a good chunk um, of the retail landscape here. Um, I think you know, with Amazon really dominating there, that's a, that's a very, very healthy share that they've managed to achieve as well. So, you know, well over a quarter of visits. Um, so that's that's in, increased from 18.6% um, in December 14, which is you know, is extremely impressive. Just looking at the categories where we've seen you know, growth in referral, um, search you know, is still by far and away the top driver out there. So 44% of traffic coming through to retail websites were, were coming through from a search engine. And that's probably no surprise to you know, the majority of our clients. But I think to you know, see that as a, uh, a source that continues to grow, continues to be you know, highly relevant um, to consumers, I think it's clearly one that demands a, you know, a great deal of attention um, and budget at the same time. So I think search is one that we're going to have to watch, particularly with the you know, the advent of voice searches coming in over the next year and, and how that could impact uh, consumer activity as well with a real drive by you know, hardware manufacturers to, you know, to encourage that voice search and make sure that users are engaging with it as well. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be really interesting to watch. Um, social as well, another area that we've seen growth from. So almost eight percent of traffic to retailers, um, not just an area where you know target audiences are spending a great deal of time, but also one where you know if leveraged correctly, um, we see a great deal of engagement um, being driven as well. So I think the incorporation of, sort of buy now functions and those those more commercially focused call to actions is clearly having um, clearly having an impact there as well. I think you know as, as a growth story, it's really important to note. Since last year, we've seen you know, a, a decline in traffic from uh, social year on year. Um, I think it's it's really proving to be a much more effective tool um, this year compared to the previous Christmas. The the other one that we highlight is multimedia. Now, this includes websites such as YouTube, which have a very large share um, within that category. So, really seeing that you know increase. Um, and the, the share of traffic that they're driving to realers, uh, retailers rather. Um, the users becoming much more video video savvy as well. Um, yeah, I think YouTube is a resource by which to advertise has got much more effective as well. So I think definitely one that's here to stay. And I think in the conversations we're having with clients, making sure that video is leveraged as effectively as possible, um, both in terms of engagement but also um, from an advertising perspective as well, um, it's one that you know, really needs to be focused on. Um, the other area that we have sort of skipped across but is very significant is department stores. Now, this is the thing that sort of um, measure that Hitwise is great for. Now, we see traffic coming from department stores to the shopping classified category because users are making comparisons. Um, so, by measuring your upstream and your downstream, you can start to get a real, a really clear sense of of who your audience and your consumers are comparing you against, and also look at how that trends over time. So I think, you know, understanding that level of comparison uh, can be a great measure for our clients, and one that I'd strongly recommend using. Yeah, and Billy, we also saw that during the holiday season, during the Christmas season, rather, those department stores and apparel referral traffic are up even more as people are starting to go from one department store or apparel site to another, to another, to another. They're really shopping around more heavily during that season. So, you know, you make sure that your landing pages are as engaging as possible to keep them from going to another site right away, jumping to another site. Very much, very much. Um, and perfectly, now that he's speaking back to me, um, I'm going to hand over to John for the, uh, the section on mobile as well. Okay. So this section we want to talk about just the mobile trends that we're seeing in the marketplace. And just before Christmas season kicked off, before Black Friday, um, we were measuring about 50% of the visits 
to shopping and classified sites were coming from uh, mobile devices, so to just under 50%. And that remained about the case throughout throughout the Christmas shopping season, so it was pretty, um, pretty steady at 50%. Um, and so that compared to the average uh, the average website is about 40, 25% higher, so about 40% of all sites are getting traffic, their visits are coming from mobile devices, whereas uh, shopping and classified sites are getting, getting nearly half. So while we didn't see uh, retail sites and shopping sites hit the 50% the mark overall this Christmas, we do think that this, this was probably the last desktop Christmas because we expect next Christmas those sites will have all probably reached or nearly all reached a uh, majority share uh, where mobile needs to become your dominant um, your dominant contact strategy or dominant engagement strategy. On the next slide, we can actually see um, that, that a number of sub-industries within the shopping and classified uh, category have already reached uh, that majority that majority share across, across that threshold. Um, and, and leading the way, our health and beauty sites, uh, which now receive about 58% of mobile visits, of visits from mobile devices in December, uh, intimate apparel and accessory sites are also receiving a strong majority of, of visits from mobile devices. You know, of course, both of these categories contain, you know, they're they, they're potentially sensitive topics of a more personal nature. So it's normal that these would be the first um, to kind of cross the cross the finish into the mobile tipping point. Um, however, you know. Apparel and accessories overall, house and garden, um, sports and fitness, even flowers and gifts sites are all still now comfortably in in the mobile territory. And again, as we expect, um, you know, this year to, to proceed, we see we'll see toys and hobbies, department stores, appliances, and electronics to even cross more more forcefully into that mobile territory. So it's just that a heads up. To marketers to really make sure that your campaigns um, are mobile optimized and that your landing pages are optimized to be, you know, to be viewed on a mobile device. So the the next slide that we'll talk about here, and this is le leveraging a new a new feature that we are delivering through our audience view platform, is looking being able to look really quickly at mobile searches versus desktop searches that drove a visit to um, to a shopping or classified site. And just as we said, that about 50% of visits are, are coming from mobile devices, we actually see an even higher share of search coming from mobile devices. In fact, 61% um, of searches during this, during this Christmas season that resulted um, to a click through to a shopping site were, not, were conducted on, a, on a, either a smartphone or a tablet. And if we look at specific terms or specific kind of themes within uh, the searches that are more heavily skewing towards mobile devices, we can see um, leading the way is probably hours. That you know, searches that include the word hours, um, even open times, 82% um, of those searches now are occurring on a mobile device. So that makes you know a lot of sense. As people are are out and shopping, they want to know maybe last minute, oh, is the store open? So or, you know, what are the hours of this retailer? So I'm going to do that search on my phone. Uh, likewise, any searches really that involve the word near, and these are commonly, you know, the store near me or a sale near me or, or something uh, that's within my proximity, those are 81% are of those searches are conducted on a, on a mobile device. Likewise, we see a lot of higher than average concentration of searches including the word sale being mobile. And interestingly, we see um, jewelry where 73% of jewelry uh, related searches are conducted on on phones and tablets, and and that makes obviously a lot of sense, um, given that if you're if you're buying maybe an engagement ring or a, you know, a special surprise a piece of jewelry for your partner, you don't want them to potentially find that information in, on your on your shared computer with them. So you're going to be conducting that search on your mobile on your mobile device. Um, likewise, we see tracking, and that's probably related most specifically to package tracking. Those those if people get nervous about where, where their orders are, they'll, they'll check those on their phone. Um, and then vouchers, you know, as we saw, just like sales searches are more likely to skew mobile. Uh, so, so too are searches for the word voucher. So, you know, keeping that in mind that, that shoppers in your store are, are readily accessing information on, on other, uh, on, on where to get discounts and, and vouchers and where other sales 
are taking place. So you know, your mobile strategy needs to take in mind that a lot of, of these types of searches could be con could be taking place within the walls of your store. So being able to kind of offer those people quick discounts and rebates um, while they're shopping in order to not lose them. Uh, likewise, if you look at the searches that are skewing desktop, and as we know, like only 39% of searches are conducted on desktop, so not a lot of searches are desktop related. But um, the, leading the way would probably be searches including the word converter. So that would mean you know pounds to dollars or pounds to euro converter. But we also see that include things like inches to centimeters. So if people are doing international shopping and ordering things from other countries to be shipped into the UK. We see that they're doing a lot of those types of, of searches for converters. And this is probably skewing desktop because that's where people are doing more multi-tab browsing. So they may have a, a retail site open on one tab and then open a new tab and do a search for conversion of dollars to pounds to find out if they're ready to hit the buy button. So that's a, a, a kind of activity that's more heavily skewed towards, um, towards desktops. Uh, we also see, you know, anything involving the word .com or .co.uk. So if people are typing things like that into their browser, um, they're just trying to find. Maybe they're trying to find the website. And of course, our browsers now um, act as search tools and um, and address bars. So, so some of that activity is registered as a search. Um, you know, it, that those are more heavily skewed to desktops. Um, rewards too, we see as people, interestingly, we as sales and voucher searches are happening on mobile devices, reward searches are happening more on desktop, and that's probably because you're managing kind of that reward account. Um, so we'll wrap up that section and then, kind of, I know we're running a little bit late, um, but move into kind of the hot products of the season. I think Billy's going to start us off there. Thank you, John. Yeah, so moving in, just to give you, you all a view of the both top products across the whole retail landscape that, that we've been seeing. Really Fitbit is one that has stood out this year particularly. Um, I think we've we've used it in a number of uh, examples when we've been going out and, and speaking to clients. This year has really exploded, so uh, it was good to know that all that work we uh, we did on uh, understanding it was relevant. Um, we can also see Pandora, Pandora Charms, um, Amazon Fire Stick as well. Um, and and those are really two where you know that's probably a result of very very high responses to you know, big TV campaigns um, I was seeing at the time as well. We've also got the Pie Face game, which was something I knew nothing about, but I am reliably told is um, again sort of went viral. Um, I think I'm right in assuming. So we've we've really seen uh, you know that come to the fore. It's been one of the top growers as well. Um, and perhaps more predictably, Lego, which is one we can see again and again and again. Um, the popularity of these, these products just doesn't diminish. Um, and I think the same for you know, iPhones as well, the 6S. You know, we saw a lot of activity around that. Um, others in the mix, uh, Yankee Candle, Elf on a Shelf, uh, Clark Shoes, and then Hotel Chocolat as well. So we've got sort of traditional gift ideas uh, in here. If, you know, if in doubt, get a candle. <laughs> Um, hot toys as well, so just bringing a bit more um, focus into this at the same time. So this is just really trying to provide that overview of I suppose what more of the, the kids market and landscape can look like, um, particularly when you know, parents are looking for gifts, etc. Although um, I think it has been known for certain members of this office at least to uh, purchase Nerf guns on occasion and get very excited by them, which is uh, entertaining. Um, but others in there, again, this pie face game cropped up. Um, Sylvanian families, uh, Royal Patrol toys as well, Kinetic Sands, Foam Cone Factory. So we've got, we've got a real mix in here, but I think that you know, it's a real testament again to you know, the ways that our clients can use Hitwise to you know, really dig into the search data behind, um, you know, behind the growth um, that we see. Um, in retail, particularly over these seasonal spikes, and, and really make sure that all their campaigning is aligned to to meet the requirements, to make sure that they've got the that merchandise in place at the same time. Yeah, and I'll just add to these are these are the, those are the hot products of the season overall. But we were monitoring them week by week, and you know, it's very important to keep track of hot products. You know, see what people are changing, are looking for as the season progresses, because you know they might be searching for certain 
set of products earlier in the season and a different set as the season progresses. So these are just overall hot products, but you know, we do track these every week throughout throughout the Christmas season. That's another factor to keep an eye on. Definitely, I think that year over year. Yeah, sorry, Billy. Um, you got, you got, then you year got, over year, we're also seeing um, kind of we we saw like those. Those, those standard hot products, which you know, many of them are kind of timeless, like like Lego. But then, uh, if we look at kind of the the products that we really saw trending or, or, or increasing in popularity uh, the most in 2015 versus what we saw last year, um, kind of give you an idea of what products are most emblematic for this for this past Christmas season. We saw again that that pie face game, which um, is is unlike you know almost anything that I've ever seen in, in my years of doing this type of research. It's just kind of shown up out of nowhere and, and skyrocketed to first place. Um, then we also see, of course, uh, the hoverboard, which was another product that was brand new this year. It also um, coincided well with um, you know the anniversary. I think that was the 20th anniversary, or so of the of Back to the Future. More than 20. Um, I'm probably dating myself there, but. Um, Again, it was very it was it was hot even before people started um, researching, uh, you know, whether or not it would catch fire or whether it was legal in certain places um, across the world. So um, again, it was a big one this year where we didn't see it last year. That Lego Dimensions game uh, was also uh, was also pretty hot uh, in terms of uh, of these these toy figurines that can enter the digital world through gaming consoles. That's definitely a trend that we're seeing overall. Uh, in, in the toy space, um, and with you know Xbox One Elite controller, this is actually the third Christmas for Xbox, and it's also the third season for PS uh, PS4. So people are trying to make those um, those products that they've had now for a number of years fresh, and this controller was definitely one way that they were they were seeking that out. Uh, Kinetic Sand, interestingly, that was um, that was a product that was really um, a big seller in the United States last year, and it seems to have have caught on even more significantly in the UK this year. Paw Patrol 2 um, is, has much has been around for a couple of years, but it's much more popular this year. Pretty much anything Star Wars this year, right? Um, Star Wars Lego or, or lightsabers; those were those were incredibly popular compared to to, to years past and. Um, I've been told that these Adidas Superstar shoes have, are making a comeback. I'm unfamiliar with that with that style, but you know, keep an eye out for that on the streets in the next in the next few months and to see if, if people are picking them up again. Because we definitely saw increased interest in them uh, in our search activity. But since we just um, wrapped this uh, a similar webinar up in the in the United States uh, last week, uh, we thought we'd share kind of what those trending products we saw. Um, on this side of the pond, war just to give you an idea of you know what might be what might have the potential to to cross over, uh, and what maybe doesn't necessarily. So we saw, of course, high face game and hoverboard and fit uh, were trending were trending in the United States as well this year. Uh, we saw these adult coloring books were doing were enjoyed a really uh, hot moment in the United States for for a period this Christmas season. Uh, where they were really not registering um, on on the radar of the UK consumers, uh, the Amazon Echo, which was released in to a limited audience last Christmas in 2014, was now available now to everyone in the United States, and it actually hit fell within the top 20 products this year. So, so consumers are really starting to embrace some of these smart home, smart technology products, and you know more and more. Um, these these technologies are built into to existing uh, to existing things that we own. So that's not yet available in 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 the UK. But I know that we've seen in search activities that that that, that consumers are starting to search to see if when it's going to be available and how they can maybe get one in the UK. So when that does release in, in the UK, we expect that to probably be really popular. Um, the Yeti Cup it's um, it's kind of probably a US phenomenon. It's part of this really high end line of, of Coolers, uh, and it costs you know three, four hundred dollars and up for you know to keep things really cold. But this is one of the entry level products. But it's it's a it's a brand that we will have on our radar as we start to head into the spring and the summer season, and people start to plan picnics. It's, it's a really high end product, um, but people do seem to be warming to it quite well. Um, so now uh, we just we know that we have just wrapped up the Christmas season. Uh, but we did have clients that have asked us, you know, so now what we've talked, we've just talked about Christmas, but what are people shopping for now? So to get an idea of what people are shopping for right now in January, what we did is we looked 
at last year's trends in general. So between December 2014 and, and the first month of the new year after Christmas, what, what products were start, starting to kind of rise again in search share? And we saw that consumers were, were flocking back to um, kind of home, uh, home goods like curtains and, and, um, and other things to kind of, as their nesting instincts kind of, kind of take, take hold again after the holidays after the Christmas season is over. We also see things for, for babies and new moms starting to kind of rise again in popularity. As well, we see things related to, to weddings start to come up again um, and also starting to see some activity around kind of bathing suits and warm weather apparel as people start to plan if their spring, their spring uh, holidays. So these are the kind of the, the products that, that are starting to rise again um, on consumers radar after they've kind of gotten all their high faith uh, purchases out of the way over the Christmas season. So to wrap up the webinar, we're going to talk just about how you know how obviously how important it is to to focus on on a specific audience. We've been talking uh, so far about just products and, and purchases and, and behaviors in general overall, um, but we want to look at you know more specific audiences and we have a new tool with our audience view platform that will help us really take a look at um, you know, specific consumer segments or audiences, if you will, and better understand what they're looking for and, and how, to, how to engage them. So actually, uh, Bill, if you want to skip ahead maybe two slides, um, the next one after the gift guide slide. Yeah, here we go. So we've put together um, a couple of audience segments, and we released this. We, we actually produced our own kind of gift guide earlier in the season uh, with blog posts to kind of help marketers and even consumers at the buy for certain segments of the population. So, of course, you know, rugby and football fans, um, you know, are, you know, they're going to be interested in, in sports related um, products and apparel, but we can also look at specifically at their search behaviors. And, and just to back up a step, I guess, um, we defined rugby and football fans as, as, as people who visited, you know, rugby or football sites or engaged in kind of search activity. Um, looking for rugby and football information online. So we can define that segment really quickly and then look at their search terms that we're driving traffic back to either a shopping site or to a sports site or a travel site to kind of really help us understand who these consumers are. So again, we you know it would be obvious to know that you know sports apparel would be popular for rugby and football fans, but uh, we also found out that you know they're gamers, they're looking for that Xbox One uh, elite controller. They are looking for North Face apparel products, um, and you know, they're looking for very high-end uh, vacuum, specifically the Dyson V6, um, which is, I think, you know, several hundred pounds, um, probably, to start with. So, again, this is an audience. We can learn more about their lifestyle uh, just by looking at their search behavior. The next one, we just looked at affluent consumers. Obviously, we'll see uh, products that they're more likely to be searching for being those luxury high-end products and, and leading the way um, were Hunter Wellies. Uh, we also saw Nespresso doing really well among the affluent set. And these are people, again, who, who have household incomes of 50,000 pounds or more per year. Um, and then another product we saw performing really strongly within this set uh, were, were those Sonos speakers. Um, so again, high-end products, but this will help marketers really understand specifically which ones um, have favor with, um, with the affluent uh, consumer. And then finally, we'll wrap up. We'll kind of go all in with the last segment. Adele was you know, kind of pretty much had to have been living under a rock to have not um, been exposed to some of the songs and information about her album that released uh, this, this fall. Um, and we wanted to look at you know, kind of who Adele fans are and, and what we can learn about them through their search behavior. So we looked at people who were searching for Adele, information, concerts, uh, ticket schedule, how to download the album, release dates, and whatnot. And then we were looking at their their search behavior, driving traffic to shopping sites. So we we found very quickly that Adele fans are you know into technology. They're more likely to be searching for the Apple Watch and iPad Pro and Chromecast. Um, they like you know kind of those Yankee Candles and Molten Brown um, product things that are kind of you know fancy um, little mini. Uh, pieces of luxury, and then we saw that they're really big into fashion and apparel, whether that's kind of more affordable fashion from Forever 21 or really high-end um, luxury products like that would come from Hunter, um, and then Links of London was another product that did really well among, among the Dell fans. So that will wrap us up, and Billy's going to just kind of give us some top tips to take away from the webinar now. 
Thank you, John. I think there was a sneak peek there, but um, it shouldn't matter. So, top tips: Black Friday. You know, it's it's the it's the new Boxing Day, but um, you've still got to get to work. Um, so, I think yeah, with that in mind, you know, campaigning needs to start much earlier. Um, and I think really building up to that that Black Friday point, that's when you know, we're we're definitely seeing you know around that weekend that. A peak in consumer activity. Sort of the appetite for you know, consumer goods has really grown um, and moved much earlier in the day. So making sure everything's geared up around that day to drive interest, to drive sales, um, we think is going to be key. Um, socials really returned as a driver of retail visits. I think the, you know, the sophistication with which uh, brands are you know, using social now has, has improved greatly, but also um, to link in much more effectively, the you know, the platforms have done a much better job by making sure they've got action buttons integrated. But it's also up to brands to make sure that those you know, those call to actions are are integrated in campaigning as well. Um, thirdly, mobile first, which has obviously been a message that has been reinforced over the, the last few years. We're you know, I think as John said, very close to reaching that tipping point where you know, desktop is ultimately falling away and certainly I think there were figures released yesterday around you know record falling PC sales again and mobile's really at the forefront uh, of everything that consumers are doing and therefore it should be at the forefront of everything retailers are doing as well so majority of visits we're expecting to, to tip over this year um, particularly for retailers which is always at the forefront of consumer development so really keep that in mind as we move into 20 or through 2016 rather um, I think staying on top of consumer trends is key as well. Search is you know, a great resource for this to really uncover the you know the intent of users, motivations, but also to to get that sense of what your wider marketplace looks like as well. So keep a track of how that activity changes within Hitwise, really to understand how consumer tastes are changing, what those what those preferences are going to be. Um, finally, which is something I think we've been evangelizing for number of years now is really understanding who your audience is um, and we you know we as a business are trying to make that as easy and trouble free as possible for our clients so if you know if you want to understand you know Adele fans for instance you know, building that audience takes minutes we want to help you run that analysis quickly and just get get that information back that you need to make sure that you're targeting those users as quickly as possible but also being as relevant as possible for for what they want um, and require as well. So thank you very much for listening and bearing with us whilst we've had um, a few technical errors. Um, we're usually a little bit slicker than that, but um, I'm sure you're all aware that these things happen. Um, I don't think we've got any questions, but um, if there is anything that you would like us to expand on or, you know, want more information around, please do get in touch with us via um, email, through the website, and I think there'll be a new website um, in the coming months. Um, at the moment, it's still on the old Experian pages, but you can email us at contact hitwise at connectity.com. You can call your account manager, you can tweet us, whatever you want. Um, but thank you very much for your time. Thank you, John, for uh, dialing in from Hawaii at a very early hour. <laughs> thank you. Um, and hopefully we will be running another webinar soon. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.